All right, we're live. Robert Bender, uh, Bob Bender Comedy Channel. Uh, new daily comedy podcast by myself. Uh, comedian here in uh, Dallas, Texas. My name is Robert Bender. Hi, how you doing? Nice to meet you. I hope you think I'm funny and subscribe to my stuff. Interesting cat, you know? Yeah, you got I'd it. say you got it. You're an I'm not your average dude, really. You got you got extra <laughs> you got extra panache. <laughs> panache. The panache that the panache. audience is looking for. Panache, he says. You're not saying I'm gay, are you? No, no, I'm calling you eccentric. That's what they say in the South. When you're gay. Which is a good thing because I am gay. I'm so gay. Dolphins keep pictures of me. But it's all theory and no practice let's be honest you're so, real here yeah man. yeah i just i like to make my straight friends nervous but that's about it that's all i uh, get out of being gay is you know and there's one or two weak ones in the fold out there that's fun that's funny when i make them nervous Robert, you know what you need to do? it really is it, it entertains Robert. me but like no i don't want to have sex with them no Robert, no no, no. For, for your love life you should consider going after those guys that really, really want to keep saying the word faggot, and then just uh, say if you're gay, you can say it all you want. Then they fuck you, because they like that word so much. Isn't it interesting how he's describing a nice dominant top? But this is not about me being gay, and enough of that. Enough of it. I'm just saying, homophobes would probably uh, be a great addition to that. Oh, I think big fat gay haters are big fat gays. In secret, really. They hate something about themselves. Think about it. Think about it. Uh. What do you call two uh, gay guys that own uh, that uh, that uh, have property? Homeowners. I'll let that one slide. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm with Hank. We're in Victory Park. I'm in need of uh, sustenance. What? So I'm in need of sustenance. Well, let's go get food. Not food. Uh, by sustenance, I mean Jameson oh, and a true. bottle of water. Jameson's mm. water. It's so the you... ultimate drinking show. Well, is it? Yeah. How about this ah. one with the multicolor? Yeah, you know, yeah. David Tell. Let's talk about David Tell and his awesomeness. We'll hashtag him so that we come up in his search query. Because <laughs> we're vicious we'll young it. comedians. We'll steal Dave's Hello. views. We'll pillage his crops, rape his Young's planet. in quotation marks where I'm being described. Uh, yeah. How about this place with the up, multi- Rising comics? up and coming comics in rising Dallas, comedians. Texas. Rising, rising, ah. Uh, we're gonna turn around. Let's turn this around and look at the park. We're in beautiful downtown Dallas. This is Victory Park. I'm OCD, so I counted how many waterfalls there were. There are 55. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Are there 55 counties in Texas? Yeah. Is that, ah, that's the age uh, that uh, Ted Cruz lost his virginity. 55. 55. The 55-year-old virgin. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My first boss was a virgin. Oh my God, it's the crazy cat lady all over again. Let's keep going. This is Victory Park. It's a nice area. It's Dallas. This guy walking his dog there. Oh, I'm sorry, that was his child and he's got a top knot. I. Uh, color me mortified. <laughs> color me mortified. I. I was bad. That was. That was, that was a bad mistake. What? The joke? I was like, oh, look, he's walking his dog, and it was his child. <laughs> but he had a top bud, oh, so shit. who cares? Children out here with leashes these days. He is suspicious days. as a human being. Yeah. Yes. He goes, oh, I guess my kids won't be mm. eating kibble tonight. But then again, so my, like, I, got, I got this like mustache. I felt like if I didn't have a soul patch, It'd be like a cop stash. Let's riff on that. What about kids that have to wear Kids leave? with mustaches. Are they not obnoxious? 
They come up to you, they say, hey, I'm from the IRS. Do your kid a favor and shave his mustache. They All say, right? I'm from the IRS. I need some money from you. I'm I talking you, to you, Vito. Your briefcase is empty. You look about 12, and I don't want to give you any of my money. <laughs> I didn't understand that. No, but what about tall people and groups of regular sized people? What about tall people complaining about bumping their heads on shit? Shut up! That's what, that's what the tall people, they're like human periscopes. Well, no, I was always jealous, man. I'm like 5'9". I'm a short motherfucker, quite frankly. I, I was like, you're always going to be six foot. You're going to be six foot. You're going to be over six foot. What a lie. That was like one of the myriad of lies my mom told me. But I forgive her and love her. And then... Hey. Hey. My grandmother what can gave I me, say? My grandmother gave my me... My mom! She won't see this. She's dead. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Well, I, she know, won't know I said that. There's always that old Unless saying, Unless she's Robert. watching from heaven. There's always that old saying, speak and ill And she's like, dead. be careful, young man. It's going to catch up to you. My mom was great. She was so supportive. She's always saying, you're going to be homeless someday. Yeah. And I'm then not- I began the comic. Robert. Did she know? Did she know? Did she? What? My mom is always like, Hank, what's your backup plan? I'm like, I'm going to be uh, a failure. Yeah, well, that's, it, it we'll out. call that Plan H. Homelessness. Plan H. Hey. Hey. I'm the only homeless guy with an electronic cigarette. I'm not much for losing my shit, though. Really. How about this place with the Technicolor mantle? Look at the Technicolor. The Technicolor room. mantle. Ooh, it is Buzz Brews. They have alcohol. They do have alcohol. We have Buzz Brews. And we have uh, all of Ellie's serve drinks, and then no vacancy. No vacancy doesn't seem like it's a respect, you know, receptive to visitors. What, what do you think? No vacancy. Why? Why would they have no vacancy? Well, they're not open yet. But this is that the name of the store is no vacancy. Where are you seeing that? And neon lights over there. Yeah. I guess it is. They're trying to be hip and edgy with their... Hip and edgy. With their, with their, come with in. With the title of their store that makes it sound like no one's supposed hey, to be Hey, come in, but go away. No vacancy. Not here. Huh? But if you have enough money, we'll look at you. Yeah. You if you in. have enough money. This is, this is my show. That's why I had the close-up, Hank. Let's give Hank a close-up. Oi, you walk into no vacancy, you're like, give me a shirt. They're like, all right, that's going to be $20. And you buy the shirt, and they go, no, get out. No one, no one, there's no vacancy here. You go, what the fuck? I just bought a shirt from you. He says, speaking of which, give me that shirt back. And you leave. You leave. Back to you. Is there vacancy here? I don't know. No vacancy is the name. Here's a Hank, here's a joke Hank gave me. I suffer from chronic fatigue syndrome. I smoke so much I chronic, sp- I'm fatigued. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. He he took the punchline, because that's the kind of friend he is. Yeah, let's have a douchebag. Like that was the type of comic friend, old Hanky. Oh, Hank, you man, oh, he was naughty. I'm gonna face it forward and tank Hank off of there. Excuse, yes. Hello. Hello. We are live streaming on Facebook. I am comedian Robert Bender. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. And what is your name? Hey. Megan, nice to meet you, Megan. Thank you. Thank you. I want you to turn back on me while we talk to you, so you'll be comfortable. Okay. All right. So what's going on, Megan? Do you mind if we, if you guys, could you guys take a picture of us? And... Oh, look at them. Let's look at them. Yes, yeah. I'll take a picture of you. In front of, in front of Sweet Tooth. In front of Sweet Tooth, we will. I'm gonna hand my, I'm gonna hand our <laughs> podcast over to Hank, and we're gonna take a, a, a picture of the lovely Megan. Thank you. Here in Dallas at Victory yeah. Park. Yes. Okay. Alright. This is the picture, people. This is the moment where Robert gets to prove his photographic chops. Right there's like could you take a picture of us? It's one group but six plugs for Robert. He's a here we go. Taking the picture. I hope one of the people is uh, drooling. I go, get my good side. Turns her head, she has a black eye. They're like, what the fuck? It's your worst side. Let's 
Look at this in the frame. Rubber bend in the game. So now, now we wait. Look at this. Look at this. They got these skate blocks on the fucking uh, on the on the ledges these days. You can't even skateboard around it allowed on a ledge anymore. It's fucking terrible. They got they got they got cupcake ATMs now. That's how far we've come. We've got a guy who um, got Cheeto Hitler and ATM cupcakes. It's the America of today. If I was gonna commit suicide, I'd probably like skydive into an auditorium on a bed of nails in front of a live audience and uh, charge them like 600 each 600 a piece and then uh, you know I get I collect all the profits let's go see what Robert's doing state we're watching it is it blue is it red wait a moment to sign i like your hair i like your style actually yeah. oh well, you all thank you so much together, so uh, what's cool what's cool xavier, xavier. Yeah. yes i've heard of it yeah it's Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah. awesomeness yeah. well enjoy dallas this is victory park thank you yeah 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 the w's that way okay. uh, Let's so what that. what is uh, what's the what's uptown you want to get up in the uptown there's like a free trolley you can ride called the m-line trolley take you all over uptown if you like seafood the shell shack you're doing that shell shack. oh the shell shack is good yeah 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 you can get that uh, you can get that crab served uptown style where they take it out of the shell for you it's good yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah that's up that way mckinney so just kind of walk up that way i live in the moreau building and we're just kind of walking around killing time today yeah so what what's Special about the Sweet Tooth building here. It's just like a fun hotel. Oh, it's a hotel. It yeah. is. It's a museum. I said hotel. Museum. Oh. Art museum. Yeah. Oh, there's okay, an art cool. gallery there. Is yeah. it open? We go in. I was like, yeah. what is that? No vacancy. That's so cool. Like to do the exhibit, and you can take cool pictures and show them the pictures. Yeah. Yeah. That you sure. can oh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, so it's like you can. It's like so just like, photo app. It's like like t it's the the thing. Oh, whoa. Whoa. It's like um. That is so cool. Totally worth the money. Yeah, I agree. Oh, that is awesome. I mean, it's all kind of like neat stuff. Very that psychedelic. So cool. I didn't know that. That's a, it's a gallery? Or? Yeah. What do you think about that? I think that's awesome. You know, With the artist. So oh, my gosh. Like, who created which room? This is, this was, so this is called the Sweet Tooth? A hotel. Uh -huh. Sweet Tooth Hotel, and it is a art gallery installation. Yes. yes. And but who's the artist? Sure oh, there's various artists. Yeah, there's like six, seven different artists that work. Is it always called Sweet Tooth Hotel? Uh -huh. Awesome. Thank you so much. I, I'm in comedy because oh, I was a, a gallery guy at Crystal Bridges Museum of American Arts in River in Bentonville, Arkansas. That's how I got into comedy. Are you still going, Hank? Or what yeah. Are you doing? I'm recording here. You're recording the ground. He's giving a test. Well, here. listen. Yeah. And this is a live broadcast about me. <laughs> nice to meet you guys. It's Jamie University Studios. Enjoy Dallas. I love the Shell Shack, but there's so many good restaurants. That's fun. Why here? Walking distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop them scooters, though. They're, they're dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you how many face plants I see from my, my balcony. See y'all later. Bye. Thank you. All right, we back. You're going to hand it back off to me. Here you go. Yeah, it's been right. I don't know what I'm going to turn around. I'm back in charge now. Hello, it's your host. It's your host, Robert Bender. Look at this, all the fellas. I, I like the look of my face. I should. That's why I want to be. I want to be in media. I I want to be part of the liberal media. It's as simple as that, Robert. All yeah. Because I'd like money. All you have to do is record yourself on Facetime. Do you suppose if we just sat here and said, "We'll take a shot of JMO and a bottle of water," would the waiter scoff at us? You want me to go get a waiter? Would he scoff? Uh, Hanky's gonna go run to the rescue, and I'm gonna sit right here in the corner. Y'all can look behind me. How you doing? <laughs> Scared that guy. 
That's hilarious. It's, it's kind of an interesting weapon. Just like that. Social media. Right? Because do you want to be on somebody's live broadcast? I would. I don't know. Hank, what do you think? About what? Life. Uh, can we get two uh, two shots of JMO and two bottles of water? All right, that's all we want. Um, about life, I think that uh, you could you can always have expectations about what something's going to be, but they never are what you want them to be. And so, the more you have expectations, the thing with the future, the less you'll diminish. The more you'll diminish your present moment, and you know. The, really, the point is to life is you go through this to pressure everything, everything means nothing, and it's just all a joke, and you can just fucking kill yourself. But the real point is, is that. Is that nihilism? Is, that is nihilism. I, I, I can't believe it. It's nihilism. But the point is, is that. All of a uh, sudden. In my podcast. Is, is that, the point is I'm sorry, Hank. I, I was interrupting. I interrupted with a brief view of myself. Please continue. Right. No, you just realized that the point is, is that there is no point. So you might as well try and make people laugh. My okay. Opinion. That's my opinion. That was it. it. Inside scoop. Is it wrong of me to say that that was a lengthy opinion? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Strong, yeah, lengthy. But... Lengthy. Uh, I'm gonna hand you my credit card so we can uh, take care of matters and you don't have to worry about us. Right. Uh, there we go. Your your pizza is delicious here. This is Olivelli's pizza. It's Neo Neapolitan pizza. Oh. In a traditional style, and uh, yeah, it's pretty badass. It's good pizza. Yeah, there's Hank right there. What up? What I rest up? my rest my elbow on a bush, and I apologize for my finger getting framed because uh, I I'm not a cinematographer. I'm just a dude trying to do comedy, make a living. And uh, buy stock in Jewel because watch Hank. Watch him go off over okay, there. Hey, yeah. What is that? Am I a monkey Jewel. in a cage? Am I a jukebox? Show a quarter on my ass. I'll sing a song for you. Get the, uh, what are you, Harvey Levin? Get he's always man. coming on to me. What? what is that? <laughs> so what are you, Harvey Levin? Am I Harvey Levin? No, Harvey Levin's a pretty buff dude. No, but you're like TMZ because you're getting, he, you're getting yeah. the inside scoop. And the I, inside scoop. And I don't mean ice cream. What was he talking about? Mm. Hold on. Interactive show mm. with the audience. Hold on. Dink. Dink. There we go. Mm. Yeah. It's delicious. It is a breakfast of champions. Robert, you know what's great about boats? Um, you know, Hank, I'll be honest with you. I like a boat because um, it gets you out into nature, you know? Yeah. And if you don't like nature, you can always drown yourself. Hey, there you go. Yeah. What if you try to quit smoking and then you went to like try to you try to like fulfill another hobby to replace smoking? So you quit smoking, you take a pottery and on the first pottery day. He could have said blowjobs, but he went with pottery. Yeah, so you go with pottery <laughs> and on the first day you make asterisks. Then you'd be like, This is fucked. My advice on quitting smoking was to always save one of your dirty ashtrays so you can smell how disgusting it is a week after not smoking at all. So that you'll not smoke anymore because it does disgust you. It is we, we smell we smell people who smoke stink. They stink. They stink. Yeah, that people who smoke stink. Huh. I have a long convoluted work story that involves that very subject. But that's for another time. Robert, what do you think about the... Uh, Perhaps when I know you better. 
What about the stock market? Perhaps. Right you think the stock market is worth talking about? What about the stock market? Did you invest in uh, Lululemon? I did not. They, they're they killing it right now. I was Lulu Light. How about, uh, yeah, Lulu Lime? Did you invest in uh, Enron? Uh, no, but my sister lost, who happened to have been the uh, benefits administrator at uh, one Enron, lost all of her fucking retirement. You know, had to start over from scratch. Thank you, Mr. Lay. Thank you so much. That was such a wise decision to go with the most valuable, the most favorable estimate of your futures markets ratings and taking a jump in your stock price and then not being able to ever go back. Because, yeah, you can't unring a bell. I can't unring no. a bell. No. <laughs> Amen. You can't unring no bell. No. Yeah, that's uh, that's my family's very close association with the Enron scandal. I wrote term papers on it in my ethics uh, courses of my uh, master's of business administration degree at one John Brown University, named after a Methodist evangelist and not the abolitionist who I'm related to. <laughs> no, I don't yeah, about the church. I know another John Brown. He's pretty cool, actually. Right. What about what? What? what the what? church is un is untruthful because you know I don't see how they feel comfortable lying to the public, but and and, and molesting people. You know what I mean? Because like here's the thing: I'll drive past a church and it'll say First Methodist Church. I'm like, I just saw one three miles back. You never see you know Second Methodist Church. Well, you know, the priest the did teach those boys to say Jesus. That's what I'll say. Oh, my God. <laughs> the priest is like, say Jesus Christ. Oh, you had to, you they had to do bring. Say, yeah. They do say you're not saved until Jesus comes inside you. Do you suppose Jesus had a little dick? I bet Jesus had, uh, had a little dick on account of... I imagine it was a grower. Because listen, He's like, 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 hey, like, baby, I work miracles. It's like, any size you want. I'm Jesus! Think about it. Think about it, man. Think about it this <laughs> I don't way. Think he Robert, was like that. Robert. I don't think he was like that at all. Robert, think no. about it. Think about it this way. It was way. like, hello unto you. Robert. It shall be the size that you move. Robert. What? Think about it this way, right? Yes. So Jesus, like, you got guys out there and just in society... Who are the guys with the big dicks? The big brawny, idiot, dumb guys that are big Not muscular. necessarily. No, but hear me out. Hear it's me all out, in the out, hands. Hear me, out, hear me out. And then but you got the guys that are real talented and like music and shit like that. Artists and shit and tech and writing code and things like that. They're the small dick guys. So Jesus. Not necessarily. Jesus, Jesus could commit miracles. It's all in the hands. Jesus could produce miracles. He would definitely have a small dick. He was Jesus. Not necessarily. It's all in the hands. <laughs> I got it in there three times. That's my theory. Thank you. He wasn't a brawny. He was a nerd. Jesus was a nerd. Well, he was a carpenter. He had to have muscles, bro. Yeah, carpenter, whatever. I'm taking uh, lifted and toting. Wasn't he? Was, wasn't Jesus Jewish? I thought Jesus was like terrible with tools. Nah, he was Jewish. Yeah. But yeah. Hey, have you never heard of a Jewish builder? Oh my God, he's missing a stereotype in life. Here in Dallas, the Jewish builder. I never yeah. heard of that. No, they're there. They're also your doctor. I mean, you know, sure. I mean, come on. I'm gonna look go, at, I'm gonna go hey, you know, I've been telling everybody I'm a Jew and because of my Ancestry.com shit, right? Like I did the Ancestry shit. They updated my profile and took the Jew away. It, 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 it's like a new product. Jew away. Robert, from Ancestry.com. <laughs> Jew away. Are you buying? No, I'm just going to go and ask for the waiter. Oh my God. Yes. The broke friend wants another shot. Jew away. Do what? From Dow Chemical. It's in an aerosol spray can. Nazi symbol. No, I don't like that. I am Jewish. I, I, I kind of have a Jewish name. And like, there's Jewish. I mean, I found the name. I found the Jewish people on both sides of the family. So I am. But it was amazing that Ancestry did that. And then I went from like three percent British to forty-four percent British. 
that was quite an update, I guess. You know, I'm an English git at heart. That's why, you know, I was always watching English television. You know. Robert, you want to ride home? And I, I'm going to ride I home. knew he was going to fuck off on me because he's a he's a great fucker offer of person to leave you somewhere because I'm being obstinate and not walking straight home to my apartment. No, we're not getting a ride. You're, you're going to come with me. And you're no, not no. fucking off. Uh, <laughs> but I do have to say, let's get out of here then. <laughs> we're we're going to get out of here. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to hand this off to Hank, who is going to record me while I sign the check. And uh, we stagger forth into Yawn Universe. And this Yawn podcast, I hope you're being highly entertained because, you know, Seinfeld was a show about nothing. And then there's that dog. Okay, Hank, handing it off to you. To lead the show, just start talking to people? Yeah, you can point the thing up or point at you. Yeah, you're, you're the star of the show right now, Hank. You got a close up. Now's your chance. That was my chance yes. uh, to make the move. I'm ready for my close up, Mr. DeVille. I'm ready. Did you guys hear they're trying to remake 9 11 with all female terrorists? I, fear, I frankly think this is a little distasteful because, uh, frankly, Manoir Alshecki sells the role. Are uh, you kidding me? I think Kate McKinnon will crush that part. Kate McKinnon. Kate McKinnon, Kate, you Kate McKinnon as Anwar Alshecki. <laughs> the most stubborn. That's what I read. I was reading the newspaper. Sorry, Kate McKinnon. I was reading the newspaper I read about 9-11, and it said... It was... It, the newspaper was listing all the different hijackers and said, and on War Malshecki, the most stubborn of the 9-11 hijackers. How did they figure that out? Were it they a real Mashecki. Yeah, well, like, how did they find <laughs> out? If you're a hijacker of an airplane, how are you stubborn? What are we doing? Ah, here I am. I don't know. By being a goat? That, that Mashecki was Meshuggah, was what I say. Meshuggah. And I was previously only less than 1% Western European Jew. Genetically, by DNA makeup and comparisons. I am like the margarine of Jews. I'm the margarine a, of Jews? Yeah, I I'm, I'm can't believe he's not Jewish. I can't believe he's not Jewish. <laughs> I had a whole life getting auditing transactions for the world's largest retailer. I got you that lowest price. I got you the discount. You didn't even realize. I got you that discount. Jim. Oi. Jim. So, uh, how far is the house? It's across uh, the lake. Ah. Let's survey our damage here, Hanky. So, do you see that one tall building? Uh, C3. C4. Please. Let me see if I get my finger in frame with the right spot. Right there. Yeah. That is right across the street from my apartment. All right, let's just walk that way. We're walking that way. We're going to walk over to the Perot Museum of Arts and try not to get hat pit by the heavy Dallas traffic here on Houston Street in Dallas. We're on Houston Street in Dallas. He died at Houston on, in Dallas. <laughs> and not at the freaking comedy show he was doing later that night. <laughs> He hopes. All right. It's a cool place. Tell me something, Hank. We, uh, you know, I don't really like, I'm, I'm, like, I like I'm just a regular guy. I like to drink a beer. I like to have a hot dog. Oh, sure. I like hockey, I like baseball, I like football. But here's my thing. It's a real guy's guy, Hank. I, I, I really, he I is. don't. Let, let me just get yeah. my point across here. Guy's guy. I, I don't, guy's I don't, guy. uh, feel that offended by people, by these players in the NFL kneeling for the flag, you know what I mean? No, I think Colin Kaepernick's pretty fucking cool myself. I mean, look, man, if I, if I wanted to send a, uh, I mean, you know what Take I mean. a knee. Did you see that cheerleader took a knee? I wonder how they're making her pay right now. I'm sure they are. I'm sure on her cheerleader squad, 
there are some real catty uh, bitches yeah, right now. I mean, they're like, Robert. did you see what Becky Sutan, you're what, I don't know what her Robert, name is. I'm sure she's a lovely woman. I wonder what they did. And I'm proud of her for taking a knee. Punisher. Honestly. They probably just did nothing. They probably just charged her 70 cents less than the guy. Hey, I am a direct descendant of John <laughs> and Priscilla Alden. No, for reals? Like, they're, they're my 10th great grandparents. So, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome for America. And uh, John Priscilla signed that Mayflower Compact on 11 11 1621 as equals. So, haha. -ha. Here's some women. And the women in your life. But, you know, I'm a gay man. I, I try to. I, I, I quite frankly try to minimize the women in my life. And I look pretty fucking gay as I look at myself. Look at this. Yeah. Dangle. I have the dangle mustache. Oh, I smell shit right now. Yeah. Some, someone, some homeless guy shit. Like nasty, filthy, dirty, rotten. So you <laughs> We're coming up to the Perot Museum. Interesting contemporary architecture and poop smell. Combined in one experience for you, the viewer of our podcast. You lucky, lucky dog. If you stayed this long with us, I was at the well, God bless you. Museum of Modern Art in New York, and they, uh -huh. said, they asked me if I wanted to taste freedom, and I said yeah. And it was an interactive art piece, and they put AIDS blood on my wrist. Oh. And I was like, wait a minute, this is like highly illegal. You want to taste freedom? Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, no thanks. I'd rather have a chocolate. No, but they were, but then it was like, what how about a delicious food? chocolate? What are my options? Be a homophobe? Or a I don't know, a nice green apple piece of candy. Uh, yeah, I'd rather have a green apple piece of candy. But I'm talking about an artwork that's at Crystal Bridges. I don't know if it's on display or not, and I can't remember the artist's name. But it was cool. It was called LA, <laughs> LA Cityscape or something like that. And it was just this big square pile of candy on the floor. And it was delicious. And you were supposed to take a piece of candy because art nourishes the soul and is always being replenished by new viewers all the time. It was a very great surrealist, minimalist piece of art. And it was sour green apple candy. And it was great. Uh, this is a cool building. Uh, uh, Pro, it's the Pro Museum of Art. So Pro, and then Trevor Reese Jones. Trevor Reese Jones gave us money for this here in Dallas. And I don't know, I feel like I should know who Trevor Reese Jones is. He sounds posh. Sounds, sounds like he's a member of We still have a poop smell with us. Uh, or what, did you fart? No. Okay. It's, it's <laughs> just this air. It's this air. It's this air. The air. That's what it is. We'll look behind us. Keep it over our shoulder. There are people walking behind us. And we're being social media douchebags with the Bob Bender Comedy Channel. Yes, as we walk through the streets of Dallas and have random comments on what's going on. You know, they have that big tower in downtown Chicago called the Willis Tower. The Willis Tower, yes. And I always wanted it to be a short black tower so I could call it the What You Talking What You Talking About, about Willis Tower? tower. Oh. oh! Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> so there's El Phoenix. We're going to go this way. Nah. He doesn't know where he is. I don't know. I'm just trying to get home. He's just, I'm just trying to get my kids back. Yeah, he's 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 a gore, he's agoraphobic. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't like agors at all. I'm also xenophobic. I hate xylophones. Yeah. I can't I can't stand them, so I sit. Yeah, I can't stand for it. I won't stand for it. No. I sit down. And then I listened to the whole argument. Do you have lactose intolerance? What about the one Jew that was the apostle during the 40 days and 40 nights? They finally show up and he goes, guys, I'm <laughs> letting show up to the land of milk and honey. Guys, I'm lactose intolerant and diabetic. What am I uh, supposed to do with what, that? Why, why, why are you leading me to the land of milk and honey for? He's like, I thought you guys. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I, I'm lactose intolerant. Where's the land of rice cake Take and me kale? to the land of tequila and weed. That's where I want to go. Yeah. 
All right, tequila and weed. Tequila and weed. All right, that white building there, that's our house. It Very looks close. like it, you, it's like, like they made an apartment building into an igloo cooler, quite frankly. No, 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 we're watching for traffic coming. Their light is green. No, Hanky. All right, Hanky. Stop halfway, hurry, I'm gonna hit you. I don't want to explain to your dad why you died. Yeah. Be like, well, he didn't look what both no, ways no, no, before no he crossed me. the no street. To the live viewers. Robert, you know what bothers me most about? Hold on, let me, let me turn this. You know what bothers me most? Damn it. Hold on. What you bothers know, you the most? What bothers me most is that, like, Robert and I are just good friends hanging out, having a good time, smoking some herb, watching TV. It's what I grab his butt. That's what yeah. It's when he grabs my nutsack, I feel abused. <laughs> anyway, no, but like, if I, if my dad were to find out how often I hang out with this guy, he'd be like, oh, this guy's raping my kid. Uh, well, I'd understand that, actually, but yeah, I think you more corrupt me the other way around. I know, I always come over with pills. <laughs> Quite frankly. Pills and drugs. And we get to the heart of the matter, I'd be like, I'm sorry, Mr. Gaddy. I feel like your sons are corrupting influence. Uh, good <laughs> sorry, David Senior. <laughs> he is a good kid, though. Like Hank. Hey, hey, hey. It's a fine reflection of his parents. All right, we're walking up. Hank's Hawaiian shirt. Took that guy out of frame because fuck him. Yeah. You're talking about different strokes. Now, interestingly enough, I played a producer who cast uh, a young Gary Coleman as Arnold in different strokes in the uh, AMS Picture Series, uh, Price of Fame, different strokes edition. Really? Yes. That's so cool. So you play a producer. <laughs> yes, and they did, that uh, scene was shot in a French reverse. A French, a French reverse. That's a showbiz term for how the camera was shot, where we shot the same scene twice from different angles. A French reverse. Wow. I'm so showbiz right now. All right, we're gonna look back at the view. Not me. Although I'm pretty. Hello. French reverse is what uh, I call it when you're having sex with your girlfriend from behind. Then you pull out, and then your French friend walks in, starts having sex with her. Then you go outside, you wave at your girlfriend through the window. Uh, you ever heard of a reverse? That's bitter experience. I've heard of a double reverse cowboy. How about you? How about a reverse mime? You ever heard of that? Is that you? No. Is that a mime who speaks? I was trying to, kind of. I was trying to be a mime for a while. I was one of my hobbies. Uh -huh. If we school. didn't, if we hadn't already suspected that my hanky here is a sociopath, the fact that he wanted to be a mime is proof positive. Yes. Here confirmed today. Yes. He's worse than a bipolar person. He's yeah. A, he, he's a mime. Oh, mime. Fuck. Anytime a mime tells you. Oh, I should have said that. <laughs> anytime a mime tells you what they do for a living, they're lying. Think about it. Well, if they tell me anything, I'm like, you're not a mime, exactly, asshole. Exactly. <laughs> I'm a mime. It's a lie. It's not a statement. I am a mime. I'm saying, say it again, mime it. <laughs> mime and Jemima. <laughs> That's what I want. You. I want you to mime and Jemima. I don't mean that with any sort of racist connotation, but that I like delicious pancakes and syrup, <laughs> which I do. I always wanted to watch that show Storage Wars and just like have them open up uh, a storage unit. Yeah. And it'd just be a bunch of like like little people. Like we haven't eaten for like 30 days. Oh, weird. You know, the 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 mom from the, what was that? That little people show, you know, on TLC back Pit in Boss. the day. Pit Boss. No, 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 no. What's the one with the. Was it Pit Boss? It was like the two uh, people, the little people. 
that were married and they were and they had the kids that were normal size. John and Kate plus eight. No, oh, God, they, they messed up. No, but that mom from that show, I almost ran over with my, my bike one time in Ann Arbor, Michigan, at the University of Michigan, and she cussed me out. Hilarious, real life, surreal fact. And I'm like, and now watch this person on TLC. Yeah, no, I forgot her name. Teresa and John, I don't know. Lovely woman though. Well, she's not yelling at you. Beautiful Dallas. Some asshole tried to call me there and I declined it. Because fuck them. Hey, really? That's 1900 McKinney. Let's go. That's such a dictatorial Hank Gowdy. <laughs> and we're, we're going to through a green light. So he's just like, fuck it. We can dodge those cars. But a, a dog came with us and a nice man and his dog. We are live streaming. Hi, I'm Robert Bender. I'm a comedian. What's your name? <laughs> Robert Bender. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Ah, the dog did oh, something to my thing now. I'm a local comedian. Yeah, yeah, you can see me tonight at Hyenas okay. uh, Mockingbird Station at the 10 p.m. show. Oh, yeah, okay. Guest spot. Like, uh... Dante is our headliner tonight. Ooh. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, uh, now you need to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> come see me tonight. Oh, right. <laughs> what a great dog. What's your dog's name? Duke. Duke, Duke is a hopper. I'm gonna be quite, what's your name? <laughs> ben, I'm going to be quite frank with you. Duke is the name of a racist dog. <laughs> well, is this dog racist? Him, no, he's not racist. He, he, does, he jumps on everyone, black, white, any color. Okay. Duke is an here. equal opportunity offender. To, yes. <laughs> yes, to steal Ariana Huffington's well, joke. He's an Duke. equal opportunity offender. Yeah, yes, uh, but he is cute and beautiful. Yeah, Great dog. Uh, <laughs> no, we... Last we have enough with the patrons week, as yeah. it is. Last week, you know? a homeless guy came with a dog in a, in a uh, stroller with a half a sunglass. That guy. <laughs> yeah, he like, he really? Did he ever come to your dog trying to recruit him? Did he put in sunglasses? Oh, he just put it in the I actually got the dog Yeah, no kidding. All right. Dogs. Like, I can do this alone. Public service warning. Watch out for the homeless guy in the... With the dog in a stroller with sunglasses and a hat. The d dog? Yeah. Yeah. Dog in a stroller with sunglasses and a hat. That guy's a creep. Don't, don't pet anything. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just down at Victory Park. and oh, nice. yeah, nice. yeah, we're supposed to live stream every day. That is what my uh, fan, uh, Sam Tripley, taught me. He's like, I was gonna change your life, and so that's what we're doing. So it's nice to meet you, Ben, and thank you for being on our inaugural podcast. All right, you'll have to look me up on Facebook. Robert Bender, like the robot Bender on Futurama. I'm the Robert Bender. Yeah, 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 like me, Robert Bender Comedy, Facebook, man. Yeah, see you later, I'll post this out there. All right, let's walk up this way, Hangy. Because we can. This is St. Paul Avenue, that's the Trammel Pro Tower. Interesting point about Trammell Crow is that he has a very significant collection of George Washington memorabilia and has actually the two Trumbull portraits of George and Martha Washington that are considered to be the most accurate portraits of those individuals. And they are stunning. They're incredible. Those are his. He's a good guy. Maybe I'll share him with the world someday. But yeah, Trammell Crow. And this is... A building that looks so pretty. I remember the first time I saw this building, it looked like a, a cement block, 1930s affair, but some developer redid it and it's like office spaces now. It's really nice. And this is the parking lot. I call it the forbidden parking because I watched them build this parking lot and I never see anybody park here. It's always blocked off. I'm like, who's it for? Oh, keep going. This live streaming takes me over 44 minutes in. So God bless your ass. No, we're not. We're going right, We're going up the street here. This is McKinney Avenue in St. Paul. Traffic. Beautiful McKinney Avenue. I 
I don't know if we can see that's all, all red downtown. I love the street. I remember the first time I walked up it when I first came here to Dallas. I remember driving. No, Jake, we don't. We live in this side of the street. Uh, <laughs> I remember the first time I came here visiting on business. We drove right up the street. The people in the car were like, "Oh, I would never live here." But they were some assholes from Minnesota. So, whatever. I mean, I'm not judging all Minnesotans <laughs> by any means. As uh, somebody who's from, uh, family's from Wisconsin, uh, I'm gonna be neighborly. But yeah, those people, what a pack of assholes. Oh my God. Oh my God, yeah, you guys gotta live, you gotta be right now, you gotta love the moment. What a bunch of pack of assholes. What a pack of schmucks. Now, let's talk about Oklahoma, shall we? I mean, you wanna, you wanna talk about, you know what I realized, I'm from Arkansas. I realized the other day, everybody in the day should looks down on people from Alabama. Don't they? Uh, we looked at our nose at Alabamans. But you know who Alabamans looked the other nose at? People who didn't. People from Arkansas! <laughs> so, shit. Yeah, people from Sad Alabama. Sad reality. You know who people who from Alabama looked down on? People who didn't get a prenup with their cousin. Uh, oh! Okay. Uncle Daddy, Uncle Daddy! Uncle Daddy. Uh, that's disturbing. But that was brilliant in Wyatt Sinek's show, People of Earth. Because that was a brilliant series that uh, got canceled. We're walking into our parking garage. This is how I sneak in, and the fire alarm has gotten activated <laughs> somehow, but it's not going off. Uh, 45 minutes into our live stream, and if you're watching this, you are one bored ass motherfucker. I, oh God, I said the F-bomb again. I'm trying not to say fuck, but I'll be God damned if I, I can't say fuck very all the fucking easy. time. It's very easy to say. <sighs> it's like, it's a fun word to say. It's a fun thing to do. Yeah. I mean, it's a dirty word and a nice idea all at once. <laughs> it's like, you can say fuck and it'll be enjoyable too. You can say fuck to a Christian or a Muslim or a Jew. It is an interfaith message. That's what we're saying today here on my first podcast. Fuck. It's for everybody. <laughs> it's, fuck is not racist. Where are we going, fuck did not know your mama. Ugh, here you go. No. <laughs> no. Sorry. All right, this is us signing off. Well, no, let's ride the elevator. Why not? We've gone this far. We're in this shitty parking garage. This is our elevator. We're on P1. When one has to pee, they're always stuck on P1. Hey, eh, Hanky? Every time you get a full bladder, you're stuck on P1. And Hanky's yeah, got a small bladder. And that's the scary area with a mesh background that, that, that I don't the like. Area, that's the area that when you go over <laughs> to your friend's house for a dinner party and there's one locked door and you ask what's in it, they say storage. I mean, that's where the zombie hides. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and then that's where I park my car. Those are my cars right there. Well, at least, you're, you know, the zombies wouldn't be going for your car. They're, They'd yeah. probably be going for one spot. It's like with a, with a fire alarm, my cars are at a disco. Uh, disco cars. Neither of them won right now. So, oh, we're here, we're going, this is our famous elevator. It's famous, it's, it's a world famous elevator. It's known. Famous, famous. This elevator is known for its ability to go up and down. Pretty uh, astonishing. It is. Have you heard that there's a guy at Jarrett's hotel who got his head decapitated by a descending car mm. in 76? A man had his head decapitated. Well, you know, uh, there are a lot of questions that come up in that, Hank. Like, was he peeking down an open elevator shaft? He was peeking was down. he looking up to see, like, why is it stuck? Ooh! 
No, he was well, did he have a wrench in his hand? No, um, he, he, he was an idiot that had no official capacity. Was he hanging his head out of the uh, car as it was going up? No, he was just a fool. He, he put his head to look down the shaft and he ended up getting his head cut off by the descending car. Ooh, was it suicide? This is in the that, 70s. No, not suicide. But then the, he may have been a Vita bomb vet. But then, you know? 10 years earlier in 63. Here is what I don't like. Hashtag veterans, thank you for your service. The first question at a VA hospital should not be, are you calling about suicide? All right? Shouldn't be. Why is that? I don't know. But that's, 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 what, that's the reality today. Do, do you think that like, it kind of puts like, a lower image on these veterans? This like, is my apartment. Welcome. Straight up symmetry like China in the last shot. Welcome. I gotta find my key now. I had it mere seconds ago. But I always do this. I always fuck off with a key safely somewhere. And then like now I have to fish in every single pocket. I hear it. There it is. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna let Hank open the door and I'll direct the entrance into my apartment. We're gonna end with a view of my apartment and we'll end with my view out of my balcony. And welcome to Dallas. My name is Robert Bender. This is Bob Bender Comedy Channel. And uh, we, uh, I uh, hope you are enjoying this view into my life. And if you're somebody looking in the future, looking back, going, what a fucking dumbass. <sighs> it's me. I'm Robert Bender, and I've been with Hank Gowdy. Thank you very much for watching. Come see my shows. Subscribe to my comedy channel. See you tomorrow. Ciao.